Pastor Tunde Bakare condemns the recent clampdown on the leader of indigenous people of Biafra, IPOP, Namdi Kanu, and the Yoruba Nation agitator, Sunday Boho. And with all that's happening in the people's, on the APC, will Bola Tinubu run for presidency in 2023? This is Plus Politics, and I am Mary Anna Cole. The General Overseer Citadel Global Community Church, Pastor Tunde Bakare, has condemned the recent clampdown on the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, IPOP, Namdi Kanu, and the Yoruba Nation agitator, Sunday Boho, uh, saying the federal government has replaced the search for justice with intimidation and brutality. The cleric dared a particular official of the regime of Buhari to come after him if the government was offended by those comments. And speaking about the current issues in our nation, how successful can we say that our democracy has been since it achieved its status in 1999? Well, joining us to discuss this is Timmy Frank, a former Deputy Publicity Secretary of the All Progressive Congress. Thank you very much for joining us, Mr. Frank. Thank you very much, my sister. Great. Um, and good evening, Nigerians. Thank you for joining us. Um, there's been a lot happening in the country. I mean, we're going to have to take it, uh, you know, bit by bit. But the most, the latest, obviously, is the fact that um, Sunday Boho and um, Kanu are still, you know, in court. Their cases for for Kanu, the case has been uh, moved to um, a later date, of course, because he did not appear in court. And for Sunday Boho, uh, which is happening in Benin Republic. We're hearing reports that there might be an extradition back to Nigeria. But then, of course, on the other side of the divide, there are people who are criticizing the government as to how they've handled this uh, issue, uh, human rights activists, and even the people who support these agitators. Um, but someone who's watching from the outside in, what do you think about all that's been happening and how government is handling uh, the insecurity in the country? Well, uh, thank you very much for the opportunity for me to air my views of what is happening back home in Nigeria. I just want to say very clearly, it is unfortunate, it is sad that we have a government of deaf and dumb. This APC government is a deaf and dumb government. What do you mean? How, how do you mean? It's a deaf and dumb. General Buhari is a deaf, deaf and dumb President. I'm sorry. Um, sense, I'm sorry. Just hold on, Mr. Sense, Timmy. We don't. We can't start on that note. You can't say that no, our listen, president no, is deaf and dumb, and no, we all know no, that our president listen, is not deaf and dumb. No, no, no. If he's not deaf and dumb, then he should have been listening to the cry of the Nigerian people. He should have been listening to the cries of the international community. He should have been listening to the to the worries and disturbance of what his government is doing to the Nigerian people. It is very clear that this government does not listen, and they don't want to listen, and they are not ready to listen. Because what they are doing today, this same government is just trying to do things that would genuinely break up the country. Because the kind of actions we are seeing under the APC government and General Buhari, in the history of Nigeria, we've never, never witnessed what is happening. Today, Every one person lives in fear in the country. And meanwhile, we have a government that cannot provide security for the people. So this same government that has failed in its campaign promises, this same government that has failed Nigerians, now the only thing they have, they've decided to come with a new strategy of oppressing the people that you know that voted for them. So, so far as I'm concerned, this government has demonstrated, you know, the worst frustration that the Nigerian people has ever experienced. And we don't think they can take us to the worst. We are already facing the worst right now in Nigeria. Nigerian people are in pain. And in the case of Inabdi Kanu, you can see the mafia style they use in getting him from Kenya. That is not an arrest, that is a kidnapping activities. And if a government that is kidnapping its own citizens from outside the country, 
Is that kind of a government, a responsible government? The answer is no. It what, shows that the APC is... Well, is, is, it, is it really kidnapping? Because we don't see the Kenyan authorities kicking against it or having a problem with it. And, and we see that in Benin, why of course, we're hearing, we're not sure yes. that, that there might be why? an extradition. No, for... listen, what, what, they did, what they did in Kenya and Nairobi in kidnapping in Abikano is the same method they were trying to use the same treatment on Sunday, Bo, it was because the, the Bene Republic government has seen the outcry of what people are, how people have condemned what they did in Kenya. In the case of Kenya, it is because of corruption. The government of Kenya is corrupt. And if you have two corrupt governments that is doing transactions, they can trade off anybody. What do you so, mean? What do you mean yeah. the government of Kenya is corrupt? Uh, according to the reports you, that we had, yes. they worked with the Inter, um, they, they worked with the Interpol to get Kanu back to Nigeria. According to the reports that the government gave us, um, so when you talk about corrupt governments, what? and the, I mean, I do let not me know, I do let not know how how you. President Uhuru Kenyatta's corruption has what it has to do. With the extradition let me, let me of tell Namdi you, let, me tell you clearly, let me tell you clearly. Did they follow due process in bringing Namdi Kanu back from Kenya to Nigeria? The answer is no. Did you see any courts that granted the Kenya government to hand over Namdi Kanu to Nigeria? The answer is no. So this is just a backyard transaction. Something has exchanged, and whether you like it or not, I can tell you from all authorities, some of us who get our intels, who get our information very clearly. And well, that is why you well, can see. But, the, but this can also be beer parlor talk or some conversation you're having on your dining table. Because darling, you do not, not have facts, not, you do not have this proof. Is, this you is, were not this part is not of the beer, negotiation. This is, so really, is, why should we take <laughs> your why should we take your position as opposed to the position that you, the government is giving you, to us? You should listen, listen, let me tell you. I can tell you the reason why you should take my position. It's not what the Nigerian government come out to address Nigerians or what the Attorney General come out to tell Nigerians. This is a government that I know very well. I was part of them. This is a government of, you know, this is a government that every person in this government tell lies. They don't speak the truth. This is how this government came to power in 2015. So I know them. I know the intrigues of this party called APC. I know all the leaders in this party word to word. So I can tell you without fear or favor. Let anybody come and sue me. If they says whatever I'm saying, is <clears throat> there's no facts to it. They should come and sue me. I'm there. I'm not running away. The same way they got in and become at the rest. Some of us, we are prepared someday. If that is the witch and that is the road they want to go, oh, we are ready. But I will tell you clearly, they will not go scot-free with this strategy. They cannot keep oppressing the Nigerian people. The Nigerian people have right to agitate for whatever thing that they want. Okay. If this government was giving the people the dividends of democracy, nobody would be talking about breakup of the country. Yeah. This is because this government has gone out of hand. Uh, you, you, let, let's talk about the, the agitation of these men. Um, let's start with Namdi Kanu. Now, we know that Namdi Kanu's agitations didn't start today. Neither did it start under the Buhari administration. It did start early, early, earlier on. And, and um, we remember that, of course, the, he, he was granted bail by the court, but then he was not allowed to travel out of the country. But he did jump bail. And, and, and looking at the fact that he was brought back to face his sentence, um, I mean, he obviously committed a crime. He had two shorties. Um, that were supposed to guarantee that he would return to court, but he did not. Uh, and also making those shorties, um, getting them in trouble with the court. So Namdi Kanu does have a case to answer, you know, here in the courts in Nigeria. Um, I mean, other allegations that have been hipped, we do not know, um, you know, how uh, serious those allegations are, but we know that he did commit a crime against the court by jumping bail. But looking at Igboho, who has been... Um, 
having rallies across the you know the southwest uh, and just before it was uh, he was supposed to have one in Lagos his house was raided um, we have videos of his cars being sh you know shot at shattered we saw blood in his I mean I, I, the, the whole country saw videos coming from um, you know the scene in at his house even though he was not there but then of course now he is in Benin Republic he is facing um, you know, uh, the courts. And of course, there are conversations as to if he would be extradited back to Nigeria. But looking at the struggles and the agitations of these people, many have asked, uh, if we if we as a country had our acts together, would we be having these non-state actors? Whether we like it or not, these guys are non-state actors. But their agitations, are they legitimate? Should they be going about it this way? Uh, have they even given government a reason to go after them in the style that they're going after them because of what they have said and done? Sincerely, let's take a look at this. Where, what, what are your thoughts? What reason do you want them to give to Nigerian people or Nigerians in diaspora or the entire world? The reason is very clear. Every Nigeria is already, already feeling the pains. What reason is more than what today you wake up one morning, you don't know if it is your mother that is going to be kidnapped, you don't know if it is your sister that, was, that is going to be killed, in a country where people can no more longer feed, electricity is not there for the people to see, nepotism is, is order of the day, harassment and insult of those in power against the Nigerian people. Who can bear all of this kind of pain? But 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 so many but God. many of us are bearing it. But I'm asking: Is a secession or calling for an independent state oh, the solution to our see, problems? That is, is that well, the solution to never, our immediate you, problems? I have, I have never I have never been one of those who supported the breakup of Nigeria. I have never been. But I this been but this is Nigeria. what Namdi Kano but, and, and Igboho but, are, are, are soliciting for. Oh, but it is a right. They have every right. It's not just in Namdi. It's not just Sunday Bo. The entire, I can tell you today, if you make a referendum in Nigeria, out of 200 Nigerians, if you make a referendum today, I can tell you 70% will be prepared to go. So if the government thinks they are popular, the right thing to do, we saw it when Britain wanted to leave the EU. They came up to test the waters. And at the end of the day, what happened? If people voted, in support of leaving the EU. So what you expect this government to do, if the agitation, every day you see protests in London, in America, in Europe, every part of the world, including in Nigeria, in different places, everybody say we want to go. So what a, a, a government that has sense to do is to call for a referendum. And if majority of the people said they are not ready to go, then which means these agitators, they failed in their agenda. Hmm. Because in the first place, for them to say they want to go, not just them, but the majority of the people that are now crying, that want to leave. Because when you wake up, you cannot feed. Fulani Ensman is killing people every day. We've not seen any major arrest of any Fulani Ensman. The same way they have time to go and arrest people outside Nigeria. If they... Who would have saved energy? Who would have been seeing the leaders of Fulani Ensman being arrested, being detained, being tried? But because you have a president that is the leader of the Fulani Ensman, I'm sorry. They've been shield from all of this. Uh, here you go again with these allegations about the president being the president. Another, is the president, is the president, president uh, hold on. I, I'd like to I'd like, like to set Allah. you straight. The president is the president of Nigeria, not the leader of Fulani Herdsman. Yes, I'm sorry, yes, I'm yes, sorry, you're misleading the people. No, I'm sorry, no, no, I'm sorry, I'm you're misleading no, 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 the people. Listen, you cannot say that the president is the leader no, no, of Fulani no, no, no. Herdsman. He's the, lead, he's he's the, the leader. president of the Federal he's Republic of Nigeria. Do not mislead well, the viewers. Le no, this, let me tell you clearly. He has not demonstrated as president of Nigeria. If he has demonstrated as president of Nigeria, where we are today will not be there. And that is why you can see even people like Tunde Bakari, who is meant to be best friend of General Buhari, who was his running mate in 2011. Today, I've seen that this same man that is supported has no capacity, has no experience, has no knowledge to lead Nigeria as a president. 
So the president himself has demonstrated to show that he's deaf and dumb. He has no capacity. Let's what you expected. Let me tell you, this same president you are talking about, when the leaders of the North, his own kingsmen, came out to tell the whole world, came out to tell Nigerians, tried to even shake up the National Assembly, made it very clear that, look, Nigeria is no more longer safe under our own system. And therefore, we want General Buhari to resign himself or the National Assembly should commence impeachment immediately. These things did not come from Timmy Frank. These things did not come from the Nigerian masses. This directive came from the leaders, Northern Leaders Forum. And General Buhari is one of them in the North. So if his own people has come out clearly to say this man should resign, then what are we talking about? I'm, I'm that curious. I'm no longer leading as president of Nigeria, but it's a one-sided president. I'm curious to. Have you seen? I, 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 seen? I'm sorry, Mr. Frank. I have a question. Um, you had said at the beginning, and we all know this, that you were party to those who brought the president to power. You were one of the people who came down heavily on the PDP and pointed fingers, accusing fingers as to how they had run the country down the drain. But here we are in 2021. You're waxing lyrical about the same government that you helped bring to power. And you are seemingly speaking against the president. You even started out by saying that the president is deaf and dumb, which, which I found very you know, insulting to the personality of the president. But the average person who's watching you would say, what's the difference between you and the people who work with the president today and the people you are accusing of not listening to the hues and the cries of Nigerian? What makes you better than them? Let me tell you clearly why I'm better than them. But for the facts, I was one of those that made General Buhari president in 2015. I have come out to apologize for God to forgive me for being part of a satanic collabo that bring a senseless and a wicked government like General Buhari's government. I made a public apology to the entire Nigeria and the whole world very clear. So that makes me unique because I knew the man we sell to Nigerians does not have the capacity, does not have the experience that he has failed. So being a young man, to show that difference, in 2017, I took a bow and left the party. I resigned and I said, I don't want to be this kind of a party. I don't want to be a leader in this kind of a party, that this party has failed the campaign promises. And when I saw it clearly that this party was going to present General Buhari in the next election. Like minds like me, not just myself, a lot of us took a bow and said, well, we can't be fooled for twice. We cannot be fooled for a second time. So there is difference between me and those working for General Buhari. I could have as well sat down as spokesperson of the party, enjoy all the things that is attached, you know, when you are in ruling party, the respect and enjoyment and looting. But I decided, no, that I can't be part of this satanic arrangement. I took a bow and leave. So there's no way you can compare me and those ones. I can tell you, I communicate with some people inside the presidential villa. I communicate with people inside the APC. The bitter and anger, just as some of them are cowards. They are not like Timmy Frank. I took the, the bold step to say, well, I can't continue with this marriage. And that was why I left. And from the beginning of this government, I was the only person within the party who had the capacity and goals to challenge the party as at that time. I did that because I know too much. I'm one of the founding fathers of this party called APC. So if things were not working, I have every right to say, I don't want to be like coward like every some person who are still sitting down there and okay. be complaining in the bedroom. I felt if this is wrong, it is my duty and right to say I'm stepping down. And I, I, and I took a bow and left. So I have no regret in all of this. Okay. So, my sister, there is difference. Let's talk about the most recent thing. That yesterday I had someone from a, a former staffer at the U.S. Congress. Uh, I spoke with a security consultant, a human rights um, um, lawyer. Of course, you know the story of, of the United States um, Congress and the Senate putting a stop to the sales of helicopters and some 
uh, security uh, ammunition that we need to fight, you know, the insecurity that we're facing, especially that's in the northeast and in the north central. Um, and, and they gave reasons, and one of the biggest reasons was human rights abuses. Uh, we're still discussing this issue, and I want to bring it to you because, of course, this is still the issue that people are still talking about, even though the presidency has come out to say, uh, to play it down, that it's not such an issue and that they're sure that these, um, the sale will continue. But the, the U.S. government is talking about the, the, the clamp down on the, you know, the Twitter ban. Uh, the U.S. is talking about the fact that the army was, had a hand in the NSAS um, protest and you know, the killings and the shooting um, on, on that fateful day. And they've, they've made mention of the fact that um, they think, according to them, that the government, government of Buhari is heading towards an autocratic system of sorts. But again, we are dealing with a, level, a high level of insecurity, and we need a, our army, our security, uh, you know, apparatuses need these weapons to deal with the ongoing war. What the U.S. is doing is it really timely? It, it, I mean, of course they want to deal with an issue, but what about the people that are dying in their numbers? Uh, and if we do let not me, have, our, if we, if, our, if we're not able to arm our soldiers to fight, because these, let the people that we're fighting against. Uh, have more automatic weapons, unfortunately. Let me tell you, the United States government is 100% right for in whatever they are doing. This is the same government that supported General Buhari in 2015 for him to be president. If you remember clearly, it is the same then Joe Biden was the vice president to Barack Obama. And it was Obama's government that brought General Buhari to power. So if today, this same government that brought General Buhari to power in 2015, that supported when you say When election, you say that a US government brought Buhari to power, it makes me feel like you, the US government had a hand in the polls. They didn't have a hand oh, in the yes. polls. If, they're they're support, if they were in support no, of... Say, listen, let me tell you. When, when you say... Jonathan, listen, you make a lot of Jonathan allegations. President. This is a very no, hefty sister, one. My sister, listen. Even the, go and check what did Jonathan says in, after he left power. Have you not read what Jonathan says? That Obama removed me from office. Are you not a Nigerian to see Jonathan's statement as at that time? America does not need to come and vote. It, America it, just felt... What they did as an is the, is the former shot. president they of the U.S. A, a Nigerian voter? How would he have removed? He's not even Nigerian. How could he? How could he remove you, former president listen, sister, Lock Jonathan sister, from power? That was not my listen. That was not my statement. I'm quoting, and I said to you, you can Google it and check Jonathan's statement on the United States government. He made it very clear on a live video, on a live interview in BBC. Go and check. He said Obama's government removed me from power. So this is not to me, Frank. So I'm just trying to let you know, these people that, whether you like it or not, America for any election, they try to make sure they intervene to see that a, a, a better candidate emerge and the process must be free and fair, especially in Africa, democratic system where you see incumbent presidents who you know, acquire powers to themselves and rig elections. So Jonathan felt at that time he didn't have any support because it was very clear, and some of us did the work. Then I was in a position, we did everything we did. So I can tell you whenever I speak, I speak with experience. That is why I can call names, because I know I have my facts. So they are very right. If today the United States government gives them ammunition, that ammunition will be used to kill Nigerians, not the terrorists. The one they have now, how many terrorists have they killed? They've killed more civilians. They've killed more civilians in Nigeria than they've killed terrorists. Our so, military people. So our you're saying. So you're saying. More. So you're saying they should continue holding on to this, um, to the sale at the expense of the people who are dying. Is could they because not? Because they know it's corruption. Let me tell you. Because they're not even trying to buy these weapons. Nigerian government is going to inflate price. They are going to. This is America is not stupid. America wants the crisis. American government wants the insecurity to be resolved in Nigeria. American government wants this crisis to. And is is this the Nigeria. best way for America to go about it? Is this the best way? People have called then, for other ways, listen, other measures. Is, no, listen. Let me tell you. America will not sell their arms to anybody that will use that arm to kill its own citizens. America will never. 
because they know very well. They have their reports. They have their details. They know, even right now, you can see how they kill the shy people in Nigeria. Who killed the shy people? Is it not military men? I bet this one you will say it's lie again or something or it's an allegation. Who killed Ensa's protesters in Lekki? Who massacred protesters in Lekki? What weapon did they use? Was it not military men that killed people in Lekki? So what are we talking? So why do you want the American government to release their, their weapons to a government that will come and kill these protesters again? They will never do that. So they will wait for any government that they think that will follow a proper democratic process that will respect freedom of speech, that will respect rule of law. So they've seen that this government, first of all, doesn't respect rule of law. This government does not respect human rights. This government does not obey court orders. So, so far as I'm concerned, I'm in the same, and let me tell you, as I'm talking to you right now, I've been in the United States, some of us who have come to liaise with the people and the authority to seek for support. We are here to seek for political intervention. We are here to appeal to the United States government to help us to stop and end this current menace of this Jirabwari and his party, the APC. Because what we are seeing right now, if you allow these people, they don't want to hand over power. They are planning to term. I can tell you clearly again. Oh my goodness. The APC you and your allegations. Our, cons our constitution so does not allow for third term. We saw well, someone attempted. We you. saw the Obasanjo administration amend, try to attempt it. It did not amend, work. It amend, cannot amend, work. Amend, see, we, are, we are scared, and that is why we are working. Because if you allow the current of our staff National Assembly that are and the lawyer boys to General Buhari, if they have their way, these are the lawyer boys will amend the constitution for General Buhari oh, to run on. for third term. Well, I want to say thank you, Timmy Frank, for being part of the conversation. We appreciate you, but our time is up. Thank you. All right. Well, we'll take a short break, and when we return, we will be discussing what's happening in the APC. And, of course, as they prepare for their congresses, what should we be looking out for? Stay with us. <laughs>